Hey guys, I'm sorry for the wait, it's just been university exam period, but I'm all done now so we can get back into creating some awesome stuff. I'm excited to share this new project with you guys. So I did a poll basically on film worlds to explore, and as you can see, Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind won. So that's what I'm going to be going into in this video. Now, this video style is going to be slightly different from my normal one. I'm just going to kind of talk over some key lessons that I picked up on while working on this project. And at the same time, I'll annotate the video a little bit, just for those of you who are more technically interested in 3D modeling specific stuff. But don't worry, I'll touch on that more later. I just wanted to talk about some things. But as you can see me here doing right now, similar to the boy in the heron project covered recently, we're marking out some key compositional elements to guide us, which is a step I sort of skipped out at first. It's not really required, but I really do find it's minimal effort for a decent amount of help and clarification for your process. Now, I'm not sure where this is going to go in the video, but I want to preface by talking about an important lesson that I learned on this project. And that lesson is essentially that if you are not interested properly in something, and if you're not invested properly in something, you probably will not make it very well or do the action very well. This is not an excuse that you can just kind of throw around, but it is a good thing to consider. Now the reason that I bring up this, even though it's kind of random, is that I hadn't watched the movie Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind before. I just heard that it was really good and I'd seen the screenshots of some of the vehicles, specifically the gunship, and I was like, that looks cool, I'll chuck that in there into the votes because I know that that has good potential. But when it actually came to it, I sat down, I modeled half the gunship, sort of like procrastinating around certain like patches and areas, and just kind of sitting on the design, feeling kind of stuck with it, and I wasn't satisfied with anything that I was creating. And so I just kind of ended up in a rut, and that was like seven days or so of just like kind of like bouncing around on the gunship making different random tiny little iterations and barely making any progress and then one day I was just so over having not done anything because I'd already experienced this earlier on in the year with my boy in the heron project and I was like no we've got to do something to urge this process on and so I actually sat down one Saturday night and I just watched the movie and boy it was really good and as I was watching it I was thinking wow there is so much here to tap into like so much more and that feeling sort of grew until the end of the film. And then I actually went back through and I collected a crap ton of reference image from the film. This was my original pure ref board. This isn't the section of it, this is all of it. This is absolutely everything that I was working with. I have the screenshot from the movie, I have this poster, which is good reference, and I have these two sort of toy models, which I'm using as kind of like 3D reference. And this is about all the context that I had for the movie as well. This is useful, certainly, and um, I was happy to go into it with some reference. I created a model that looked half decent, but there was so much uncertainty that plagued me about how to construct it. And to be fair, it might still plague me. That's not the point. I wasn't properly interested in what I was working on, because I was just making a thing, a model, a gunship. It was just, it was just a thing, and it's stylish, sure, it looks cool, sure, but I was actually flabbergasted at how much the context and having proper world building helps with your own creation process. This is something that was discussed to me by a lecturer actually about the importance of world building and product design and in um, art creation. And this board, which is again about 10 times the size, is great proof of that. For the gunship alone, there is so much more life and context and help with different little areas of it that it's not only pragmatically good for reference, but I know how this thing's meant to move. I know who's meant to pilot it, and what emotions should probably reside around it, what should be reflected. This ohm design, similarly, I get so much more information and how characters use and are impacted by the things that I'm creating, because art reflects emotion, like an artist is very concerned with creative expression and emotional expression, and to just be creating a flat model with no motivation behind it is very doable, but I was struggling. I was struggling to think for myself what I could be doing. In short, this is nice to make interpretive stuff, but like, why should I have to do that when I really should just be taking in the original art? Because watching that movie, even though it sounds like a counterintuitive thing to watch a movie, <laughs> um, if you're <laughs> if you're not doing work already, that really sparked me. Within that same day, I had made this whole mood board, and I got stuck into modeling, and I was halfway done with the ohm within one day, after spending seven days doing nothing. And you might be surprised, oh, you didn't, you know, finish off the gunship. Well, yeah, I abandoned the gunship because I want to come back to it after I gained some footing and something I was interested in. Because I zoomed out, I looked at this, and I was like, what do I want to make? I want to make the home. 
that's unique, that's organic, that's a bit different, and um, making what you want to make is very important. So even though I was halfway done with this, and from a technical standpoint, it's like you're halfway done with this, you should finish that. I was like, no, I feel like making this. And so I made that, and it got me working, and it got me smiling. The difference between the old Pure file and the new one really just shows how much that investment and interest can have an impact on your creative process. So I just recommend picking and choosing your projects carefully based on what you're interested in. If you can, obviously, if it's a job, you're going to have more limited choices, but that's a different ballpark. And then within that, having proper world building, proper context, inspiration, stakes, and this is regardless of whether it's something that you're interested in or not, you can make it interesting for yourself by having these things. And it will result in better designs. Because instead of having to think of these things on the spot, you've kind of got this overarching idea or emotion that you're following and trying to express as you create your thing. You've got this comfort foundation to fall back on. A proper storyboard, I think, makes all the difference. A proper little reference gathering thing. Because this reference gathering process helps so much. But let's actually be talking a little bit about what we're making here. And yeah, composition of the scene, pretty simple. High displacement sand that's been made grey. Volume in the background, create some clouds. Simple lighting setup, single light plus an HDRI camera with a 200 millimeter focal length to sort of flatten it out. It doesn't look exactly like the reference I'm going for, but it looks pretty close. I'm gonna keep working on that. I love this world. I hope that you guys are enjoying this too. And please subscribe for more work on this Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind project and more to come. Thank you so very much for all of the continued support you guys. It's been really appreciated. You legends, Smittering, Dylan Heisler as always, Joe Smith, long time support, Max Mara too, gotta give a shout out. And I hope that this video provided some useful boost or just some useful information in general. I get that it wasn't quite as technical of a video. Alright, thanks so much for watching. It has been Yeezen, and I'll see you soon in the next one. Goodbye.